Hi everyone, Alex with BeamItUp.com here. Today I'm going to show you how to create a flange pipe tag in Revit MEP. So you can do something that looks like that. First thing we're going to do, specify our pipe segment. Nothing new there. Actually, if you haven't seen the previous pipe tag videos, go ahead and check them out. You can check the intro, thread it, your pick. Links in the description. Then we're going to specify our flange fittings. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit, two things. First, I'm going to talk to you a lot about the flange itself. So the difference is that in this case, you have the elbow, right, or the fitting. That fitting will have the flange attached to the fitting itself. And then on the other hand, you have on the pipe side a separate flange. It can be threaded, welded. By the way, if you want me to do a video on uh, flange piping on its own, nothing to do with Revit, but flange piping itself, let me know in the description. I'll probably make one. So in summary, what you end up in Revit is one element would be the elbow with the two flanges attached to it. Then you have one pipe, the other pipe, and then the two flanges on the pipe. So you end up with five elements. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I'm going to remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss any notifications on new videos. And if you like the content, please like the video. See you in Revit. Okay, so first I'm going to show you the final product. So I'm going to strap the pipe. I'm using a 6 inch steel pipe. And my pipe type is called in this case AJS, which is uh, my initials. Um, fire protection flange, because I use this one for fire protection. So you want to be able to do 90 degree elbows on the flare 25s. And then you should be able to upgrade a fitting from an elbow to a T. And you should be able also, say you want to pop off with a T with a six inch, you know, I'm gonna have a six inch pipe here. And you should be getting a flange T. And then at the same time, if you want to do a four inch, for example, you should be able to get a reducing T. So let's jump right into it. And you want to come down here to your family. And then under pipes, pipe types, you're gonna select most likely if you, you you always have the standard one so let's create a duplicate of the standard one and let's rename it to create our brand new flange steel okay so if you go under type properties and then under routing preferences you'll see that it has some generic defaults like uh, copper some welded elbows we don't want any of that in this case so let's go one by one first our pipe segment for our pipe segment, we're going to select uh, carbon steel, schedule 40. Then uh, we need to load in our families because you won't see, most likely you won't have those flange families in your project. So let's go ahead and load some in. For now, uh, I'm going to go into US Imperial because I'm in the United States. And then under pipe, let's go under fittings. And then under, we're going to go into carbon steel first and see what we find. And then we'll surf around for whatever we're missing. So let's go under class 150, flange, and from here we're going to get our cross, our elbow, and maybe a long radius elbow, a, a reducer, and let's get our T, and that's about it for now. So let's wait until this loads, and now for elbow, the one that we just selected was this one, elbow, flange, carbon steel, class 150. For the preferred uh, junction type, we're going to keep T. For the type of junction, we want our flange T, which we'll find here. T, flange, carbon steel, class 150. And then under cross, we're going to select our cross, which was cross, flange, carbon steel, class 150. Now for transition, we want our reducer, which is a reducer, flange, carbon steel, class 150. And then for union, I'm going to explain to you a little bit later why. I'm going to select none here. The main reason is that I want the flange to take precedence. So whenever I split a pipe, I want to get a, a flange but we haven't selected a flange and we have not selected a cap either so let's go here under, uh, let's go under load family and this time we're going to go into fittings gray iron under class 125 under flange the from here you can get like a reducing elbow a six by four or an eight by four eight by five elbow those are pretty useful sometimes uh, but for now what I want is this T reducing flange gray iron and I'm going to show you why in a little bit uh, and then we're going to go back and under fittings 
gray iron flanges. We're gonna go under class 125, and we're gonna get these two guys. This is gonna be for a cap, it's gonna be a blind flange, and then a, a threaded flange for a standard flange. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. So under flange, let's go ahead and select our flange threaded class 125 standard. And then for our cap, we're gonna get our flange blind class 125. These two are gray iron. And so for now, let's go. So I'm getting this warning, and what this warning is telling me is that I have none here, so I'm not applying that to any size. Obviously, that's not what we want, so we have to go back here, and you want to keep this under all, okay? Or a size range that you want your flange fittings to operate under. So we're ready to go now. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna start drafting some pipe. We have our four-inch pipe. Let's uh, change it to a six. See what happens. Our reducer is operating well. Our 90 degree is operating well. Let's do a couple of 45s here, no problem. Let's select these two elbows because I want to show you something. These two guys are the same family. The difference comes from a family parameter called angle within the family. Just keep that in mind. If they were a different family, this would be great out. Anyway, so now let's keep drafting. Let's try our T's now. So if I do a six inch pipe, I want my standard flange six by six by six. But now notice that if I try to do a four inch pipe, for example, and I change this to four, and then I try to do the same thing. I was actually expecting for Revit to give me an error because in the early releases, you could not do reducing teeth with a standard T. So what you would have to do is you would have to come here and then under junction, you would have to add in addition to that standard flanged T that, that this would be like for four by four by four or six by six by six or eight by eight by eight, but not for a six by six by four, for example. So you would have to come here and then go into T reducing flange and then take this to the top and then you will use the reducing T for the sizes that were available and then this reducing T would come all the way up to let's say a 10 by 10 by 8 but you couldn't do a 12 by 12 so what you would do is use this T for those large uh, T's but in this case it, apparently we don't need them so we should be good to go before we go on I want to show you something let's quickly create a, a, a duplicate of this and let's run a little test here I'm going to call it flange test and in here we're just going to change the elbow actually let's change the pipe and the elbow right and then notice that here for union I'm going to have none and under flange I'm going to have none okay and let's see what happens if you try to do A couple of pipes here under our test slotting pattern. Notice this elbow. This elbow has the flange attached to it, but the pipe itself doesn't have the coupling flange that's going to be bolted to this other flange. See, but in our routing preference, the one that we just created, so here we have the original elbow with the attached flange on both sides, and then you have on the pipe side, you have an additional flange, which is that flange threaded gray iron class 125 that we specified so that one specified right here under our routing preferences under flange see we have the flange threaded gray iron class 125 this is the one we're using and that is why in this one we do get the additional flange the way it should be and in this one we don't so remember this is the correct way to specify flange fittings because that's the way it is in real life one last thing I want to show you is that if you want to split your pipe and you do SL, what Revit is using by default is whatever you had on your flange, okay, which is a flange threaded gray iron class 125. This is pretty similar to mechanical joint piping and I'll do another video on that. But for now, see you in the next video, okay? And if you're serious about your professional training, go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com. Over there we offer professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection. 
And we can also train you in Autodesk services like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. So head over there or contact us directly and let us know how we can help you at BIMITUP.com. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notifications. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.